So we had just seen before that GDP does in fact change over time, but how do we observe those changes in GDP over time? Well, we do so with a model that's known as the business cycle. And the business cycle just shows the ups and downs of our GDP as time goes on. And so you see a little graph here where we have our time along our x-axis, and we have real GDP along our y-axis. And so we're going to see as, as time goes on how our GDP goes up and down and up and down. And so this graph is a little exaggerated, but it gives us some of the key ideas. Let's kind of take a, a look at some of these uh, different sections of this graph. So we're going to draw a dotted line down from each of the either high or the low points. What I want to do is first point out these green shaded areas. These green shaded areas are what we call expansions. There are times where we see that our GDP is increasing. If you notice, the curve is going up in each of those green segments. So our GDP is increasing. Our, our economy is expanding during those times. Now, during those red parts, we see that our GDP is decreasing. This is known as a contraction or sometimes maybe it's known as like a recession because our GDP is falling. It's going down. Our economy is shrinking. Now, those high points are what we refer to as peaks because peaks are times wherever we see our GDP has stopped increasing and it's doing a turnaround and it's going to start decreasing. But then we also have our troughs and the troughs are those low points. It's those times where the GDP stops, it's decreasing and it starts, it's increasing. And so we know we have this kind of like up and down, up and down going on. We've seen this uh, even recently. Uh, we saw with the, with the COVID pandemic, we saw that our economy was doing really well uh, in early 2020. However, whenever the pandemic hit, we started to see a decrease in our GDP. So that means we had hit some peak and we were starting to fall into a contraction. It was shrinking. Now, since then, the United States economy has hit a trough. It hit a bottom point where it has turned and started going into the time of expansion. Again, this is just that natural up and down, up and down of our GDP. But if you look at this graph, you know, it's hard to kind of see through the, all the ups and downs. And so what we'd like to do sometimes is draw like an average line. Um, and we call this line our growth path. And this just shows us the average GDP growth. Because if you notice, despite all the ups and downs, the ups are getting a little bit higher each time. The lows are getting a little less low. And that's because our economy is gradually progressing upward, even despite all the ups and downs. So what causes all these ups and downs to happen? Well, one can be uh, an external shock, something that's impacting our economy from the outside. Uh, so for example, in the, in the mid 2000s, we saw rising gas prices. And because we saw rising gas prices and rising in oil, that had a lot of impacts on our economy as a whole, not only because of gas in general and the United States uh, being really big into like uh, petroleum uh, refining and things like that, what we also saw was that transportation costs increased, which increased the prices of goods. And so it had all these other impacts because of something that was going on outside of our economy. We can also see changes in investment or business spending. Um, as, as there's more investment spending, our economy expands and it grows and, and more investment is occurring. But sometimes that has to eventually stop. And when that investment slows, it leads to a recession because our GDP is going to start to shrink. Numbers three and four are monetary and fiscal policy, and both of these are just actions by our government to influence the economy. Monetary policy is actions by the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States, that influences interest rates, which influences consumer spending and investment spending. Fiscal policy, on the other hand, is changes to government spending and changes to taxation that impact the decisions that people like you and I make. And finally, number five is speculation. Speculation is just whenever people try to predict what they think is going to happen and it can lead to these speculative bubbles. So, for example, we saw one of those with the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s. We saw it uh, in 2008 to, or leading up to the recession in 2008 with the, the housing bubble where people were speculating on what they thought was happening in a specific sector of the economy. And when they were wrong, it, it caused a massive recession.